Right, so another bit of prep work that we needed to do from one of the earlier videos on A5. If you remember, we'd said uh, we couldn't get the rear toe where we wanted it. We had just tons of toe in, which obviously because it's lowered, it pulled the arms in. We needed adjustable items, so we got these hard race ones. So these are adjustable, so we can get whatever we want, which is uh, should be good. Because on a like on our beefer track car, we run a bit of toe out, which makes it really nice and easy to rotate. I think an heavy quattro car toe out might be a bit too much, but we don't want six degrees of toe in or whatever it is. And you get on this on the bump, you get more toe in. So safety reasons don't make them handle so good but we're hoping that makes it a little bit easier to rotate because it's not really understeer as it is but on track i'm sure it will be so we'll see what we can do on one of the earlier videos as well we said we wanted these uh caster adjustable lower arm bushes which i'll just tip all this out because this is uh all sorts of let me see but Powerflex didn't have this exact one on the shelf that we wanted. So these, there's only one way that these go as well. Not easy to get it to shove in. But that, that fits in the bottom arm. The standard one has just got a tube that goes in there, like an aluminium or stainless steel tube. I can't remember which one it is now. That's for the lower bottom arm. What this one's got, which is probably going to be even harder to shove in, Oh dear, I might want to try. We need press for that one. You've got this. As you can see, that'd be the centre. These are offset. So you've got an eccentric eccentric hole in here. So what we can get then, put this in here once it's fitted and just rotate it around until you get the cast where you want it. So more you go, more you can get. You should, where this arm is, we've not obviously done any testing on this yet, it should be affecting the camber and the caster together, really, which is a bit of a pain, but that's what happens when you're uh, working on factory cars. So we're going to try and get a little bit more camber, a little bit more uh, caster, and then with this adjustability, we can get them even, so it's going to drive nice and straight, which it does at the minute. It's not too bad, but never hurts to get a bit more. And then hopefully we can uh, do a little bit of testing on track, measure the tyre temperatures across the tread like you should, measure your tyre pressure increase and just keep playing with the suspension settings until we get it just nice, which is, it varies from track to track. Obviously, when we go to the Nürburgring, we've not got, we can't do a two minute lap and come in and uh, check it and go out again and check it again. You've got, you've got to make sure what you go out with is at least not dangerous, you know what I mean? It's not going to be, uh, you're not going to be rolling right into the edge of your tyre and causing you some problems or you're not going to be riding right on the inside and stressing it and having blowouts which we've had in the past before we've put a lot of caster on cars trying to run a lot of negative camber without adding the extra caster which gives you a camber gain is not a good idea because you stress the inside edge of tyre but see what they do it's going to be a bit of work to try and do a before and after comparison on them because we're talking minor changes I think this one's going to be a bit more noticeable especially if we go a bit too far and it feels like you're going to spin. This, probably not so much, but we might as well do it. It's there for a reason. There's a lot of people raved about these, saying that they felt a decent difference in them. See how we feel with that one. Now, this is another thing that's quite interesting and not really expensive. 30-odd, 40 quid, whatever it's going to end up being for these. These are off a Porsche Macan. Now they're a genuine Porsche part, they come with uh, these clips, genuine Porsche. So what these do, these clip to your bottom arm, which this is the, which one is it? This is the left hand side one. So it clips to your bottom arm. So these are the wrong way around. And then what you've got is, you've got air hitting this and deflecting up and that goes up to your brakes. So for what these cost, it's, never a bad thing to have a lot of brake cooling i think a lot of people that's been on track will uh will say this that they've had more times where the brakes have cooked than they've had uh, where they've had 
too much cooler than they're not up to temperature. Usually after you press them twice, your brakes are up to temperature, no matter what pad you've got. Some people, oh, you've got race pads, they take forever to get up to temperature. Not when you're on a track day or a race day, a couple of presses, they're up to temperature. So we're gonna do this, we're gonna try if we can, there's definitely not enough room with those brakes, but we're gonna try if we can to get some actual scoops going to the center of the veins, because that's where the air wants to go. There's no point hitting this at the back of the caliper or at the edge of the disc, the outer edge of the disc. What you really want to have is the air going to the centre, which looking at these, they're not going to get perfectly to the centre. So what we'll try and do is get some, uh, get some ducting like we do on our track cars. And you want to push it right into the centre of the disc. If you've got a two-piece disc with a bell and a rotor, you want to get it right in there because then the air's pushed in and pushed out of the caliper and out, the, out into the wheel and away. That's how you want to get your brakes cooled. Your brake pads will last a lot longer. Your discs will last longer. Your pedal will stay hard for longer. There's literally no negative to getting more brake cooling in other than the work involved with getting it there. We are, you putting it on full lock and it ripping it off or you're touching it or snagging it. But with a little bit of thought, you can get it to get it in there. But nice cool air going in straight to the centre. Perfect. So we'll get all this stuff fitted and uh, hopefully we'll uh, go for a drive and see how it all goes. But like I say, none of this is going to be like, no screaming and shouting about how much better it feels. We're going to notice this sort of stuff when we're on track a lot more. And it's all those little bits that add up to making a car feel good. So we'll get it fitted and we'll go from there. Right then, this is the adjustable bush, so we've put it at the minute to maximum caster. So we've pushed the arm as far out as we can get it, we've made the arm as long as we can. So it's pushing the wheel forward. This is your little adjuster that you can get in and adjust it. So when, it's, when the bolt's loose, you can just twist that and it's eccentric. So the original bush that were in there was this one that's centralised. So we've took that out and now we've got the eccentric one in to push the wheel forward and a little bit out as well. So we've got a little bit of camber, but more caster than camber. Um, so what we'll try and do, we'll get, the, um, we'll get it on the four wheel alignment ramp and we'll do the front and the rear. So the other thing we've done on here, at the front, we've put these ducts on here. So these clip onto the track rod. So they don't actually go on the bottom arm like we've got an R and B for track car. These actually go onto the track run. They just clip straight on. A little bit of die grinding on the clip to get it to just just clip in nice. But the other side fitted fine. This one, Dan broke a couple of clips and uh, away we go. So we might send a couple of spare ones out with these because the clips are pent. So we might stick just an extra couple in there. So if anybody gets them, they wonder why these four clips or three clips or whatever we end up sending. Just in case you break one. It's not worth it. This car's not got the under tray on. We're not sure if we're even going to plan to run an under tray at all because obviously when you're testing stuff, you want to be able to see if there's any leaks. So we're definitely going to have to cut at least a little bit of this arch liner out here to do it. If we put the under tray in, obviously the under tray come to here as well, so there's no point cutting that out. So we've got some ducts on order, but there's not a lot of room here, so we're going to struggle a little bit. We're going to use like a knacker type duct, uh, which we'll do a little video on r and for track car and you'll see what one of them is and the purpose behind it in a bit more detail. 
but the idea is to get a bit of lower pressure air, suck it in, and push it into this brake duct, and then that'll shove it at the brake disc, which the design of these bottom arms and the track rods and the disc setup, we're still not getting the air exactly where we want to, so we do think we're going to have to have another supplementary duct that'll push air straight to the centre of the disc, but we'll, we'll see how we get on with that one anyway. I'm hoping there's a fair bit of room from the 19 inch wheels and the 18 inch wheels to the size of this disc, but we'll see. But we are going to go to some bigger brakes at some point and then we're definitely going to have to get some cool into the centre of veins. So moving on to the back, <coughs> what we've been able to do, well, these are quite easy to see. This army has been swapped. This one, this one had black Powerflex bushes in, but we've uh, swapped it to these hard race adjustable arms. So this, at the minute, we've set it just a little bit longer than the standard arm, just so it pushes the wheel just a little bit further out to get rid of the toe in because we're like some stupid like six degrees toe, five or six degrees. So we've not set it up yet. We're going to try and do it on this ramp and just get it in one place because the car's still waiting on the bits that we need. But we might as well get the... Um, we've got it somewhere near. We can still drive it as it is. We'll get it over to the other ramp and that'll be up for the conclusion of this video. We've not really driven it hard enough to on the road to sort of start seeing any detriment from having that extra towing. So for most people, I don't think it's going to be a problem, but on track, we want this to be a bit more lively on the back end. So having six degrees of towing is not going to achieve that. We're going to probably set it, we're going to build up to it. We're not going to go straight to two degrees tow out, but we're possibly going to end up at, I'd have said, as a guesstimation, a degree or so of towing is going to make it a little bit more lively on back without making it over rotate and be dangerous because it's it's a fairly heavy car at both ends it's obviously heavier at the front we've still got a fair bit of weight at the back so and we're driving the back wheels as well it's not a front wheel drive car that you don't care if you've got loads of tow out we want it to be um we want it still to be stable especially at the nurburgring it's not a slow track like at donington you might be doing 50 mile an hour around the slowest corner maybe even a bit less that corner, you want to chuck it in and get loads of rotation on the back end at, Nür at the Nürburgring. Stability. From the videos we've seen, obviously we've not been there and we've talked to a few people that have been there, stability at high speed is far more important, but having loads of towing is not going to help you either. So but a little bit less, we should be good. So we'll get it onto the ramp when uh, we finish the other bits at the front. And uh, yeah, should all be good. So. Finally got it onto the ramp to do this alignment. I have driven it on the other wheels. Swap these over. Ready for track. I have driven it since we did the rear arms and the bushes and it felt so much better on the back end when you turned the rotation you got felt tons better. Since we've put it on the alignment and the super trackers, we've realised that we had it worked out it five degrees of towing each side at front, which is ridiculous. So them caster bushes have pushed arm quite a bit further forward, which is what's pushed wheels in. We did earlier on video, it were about a degree or so a caster that we gained. The camber were about where we set it last time, I think it were about 1.5, 1.7, something like that. Usually have a little bit more on the passenger side or near side in the UK because that's most tracks are um, clockwise so you're leaning on that side a bit more so we've we've got more caster we're going to square the toe back up I want I've drove it a little bit on the road um, beforehand with a little bit of toe out and I didn't really like that it felt a little bit unstable not sure whether it's the damping spring rates or whether it's the toe so it's easy just to Put a little bit of toe in, we're probably talking a degree total, so half a degree each side. Let's see how that gets us. The rear end, that before were five to six degrees each side as it sat. Now we're going to be setting that to probably a degree's worth of toe in. We might end up doing a bit of toe out, depending on how it rotates, but like I said, I drove it earlier and it, and it was fine. Um, the main thing we noticed since we did the 
caster bushes as well, the wheels pushed a little bit further forward in the arch and get a little bit. We didn't measure it before. To be honest, we didn't think it would be as much as it has been, but it's made a decent difference. So Paul's going to work his magic, make sure the steering wheel's straight, make sure we've got probably, like I said, 1.7 degrees camber on this side, maybe 1.5 on the other, other side. Should still pull nice and true with that. And then we're going to take it to Donington Park and try and uh, proof it out on the track. We've turned the power right down at the minute because we just literally want to test everything that we've done in the lowest state of tune that we're happy with, just in case it starts getting hot when we're at, at the Nürburgring. So we'll see how we get on with that. I'm hoping then we can turn it up later on in the day, but it's only an evening track day that we're going on, so we're not going to uh, get lots of time. And we're going to try and test the City Go as well, because that's coming to the Nürburgring with us. So we've got two cars to test. City Go's going really nice. We'll try and get a video in the next few days about that and see uh, Everybody can see how it's built and what we've done to it and all the extra work and effort that's been put into it to develop the car because people think that you get everything right first time and uh, that's definitely not the case. So we'll let Paul work his magic and uh, we'll go for a drive because, like I said, I did a little road test and it was so noticeable. It, it was probably the, the biggest thing, the rear arms, definitely worth life. If you've lowered your car, you want to get some ridiculous difference. So, Right then. Just a little update that we've got. Everybody was saying on in the comments section when we put the S5 brakes and all, they'll not be big enough, they'll be no good. So we thought, well, we've not really had enough time to do testing that we're going to be able to have time then to rectify it and test it again. So what we thought was, we'll just do everything custom and cause ourselves loads of extra stress in the meantime. So we're probably 20 minutes, half an hour away from needing to be... Uh, setting off to Donington Park to do the, the probably only chance we've got to do in a test because we're drag racing this weekend and then it's Easter weekend next week when we're going to spa and then the Nürburgring with this car. So we needed to test these now. So what we've ended up doing, Audi RS5 eight-pot calipers. Got the Padgid RS29 pads in, the same as we had with the S5 brakes. Then these are BTCC discs, so British Touring Car. These ones are used, we buy them used because they use them for one race and get rid of them, they're fairly cheap. That meant getting some custom bells made because the standard brakes on the S5 are 345 by 30 mil wide. The RS5 ones are 365 by 34. So these ones a little bit a little bit wider and a little bit bigger. They're 368 by 36. So they're a little bit tight in the calipers. What you'd have to do to get these to fit, obviously the custom bells, we've had to put a little spacer behind to lift the brake out a little bit. And we've had to machine the pads down a millimetre thinner each side, which is not ideal. So what we're possibly going to do when we sell this kit is um, sort of an upgrade for people, because the standard RS5 wavy discs uh, and RS6 stuff, uh, RS5, they're on all sorts of stuff. The rubbish, the warp for fun. You take them on a track, you'll definitely warp them anyway. We've warped them on road loads of times when we've had them on cars. That's why we didn't want to use these. So then we said, right, well, we know the calipers are good. They're a fairly straightforward fit and they're fairly readily available. The discs, they're easy to get. Let's just make some bells and some spacers and get cracked on. So these are fitted now and they're ready to rock and we saved it's roughly just over two and a half kilograms per side the calipers there 1.2 kilograms lighter each which going from a one pot to an eight pot is pretty good going and then the discs there 1.5 kilograms per side lighter so it's the way it's coming out where you need it, obviously the rotating mass on the disc ridiculously better handling. So we're going to uh, drive this down and hopefully we're testing these on the way down, <laughs> basically. So we're going to test these on the road on the way down. If we have any problems, we've still got the standard stuff, which these are the standard S5 ones. So 
see fair dis difference. I don't know what's going to be the best way of comparing them. But there's a fair difference in size, and obviously the caliper. That's a difference in the calipers. So fair difference. These are cast iron. They're aluminium, so that's where the weight saving comes from, even though it's more pistons and stuff. So all in all, this should give us a lot more braking force, last a bit longer, and we're bleeding this through with um, RBF 660 fluid, which probably a bit overkill for this car, but we know it works on our race car, so we're going to use that. And as you can see, we've got the wheel studs on there as well. So we've got them on so that the wheel change at the track are a bit easier. And we've got the uh, Nankang NS2Rs on the 18 by 9 inch wheels. So we'll, uh, we'll get to the track, take it for a run, and hopefully everything doesn't go wrong. So we've got tons of upgrades that have not really been road tested too much. So we've detuned it a little bit. I think we 310 horsepower or something like that to save the clutch. We had to drop the torque quite a bit and the power quite a bit just to stop the clutch slipping until we get that sorted. It's definitely an adaptation thing, so we should be able to just do the adaptations and then we'll be able to go again. But we've learned a few lessons while we've been doing this. These are a lot more finicky than the uh, DQ250s and DQ500s. So we'll let Paul finish doing what he's doing, finish bleeding them up, get the wheels back on, get out, quick road test, make sure they're not falling off, and then those guys will have to follow us down because we're, we're going down a little bit early to get into the briefing. So, thank you.